Welcome to Horror Syndicate Discourse. We're talking Halloween 4, 5, and 6. And since I uh, absolutely detest these movies, I'm leaving. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I like I like 4 and 6 uh, for sure a lot. Um, I got in a car accident and I got to deal with some stuff. So I'm going to hand it over to the guys. I'll be back after a while. By the way, the person who said we never wear our Horror Syndicate shirts, what's up now? Got my horse syndicate shirt, <laughs> and Milliner's wearing his damn Christmas shirt. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah. So we're gonna talk about Halloween four, five, and six, the Thorn trilogy, the Jamie Lloyd trilogy, however you wanna, uh, whatever you wanna call it. And we're almost on time today. Can you believe it? Know, it's October first, right? and we're almost on time. Uh, check out the Horse Syndicate YouTube channel and subscribe. I did a video about Dracula and the son of Dracula today, and I was told that. Dracula's daughter is not as bad as I think, so I have to rewatch that now. So, anyway, uh, take it away, guys. I'll be back after a while. And he's out. And he's out. So, the Jamie Lloyd trilogy. I think that's more appropriate than Thorn, since Thorn was just something fucking thrown in. <laughs> Part six. Yeah. But it, um, but it has a source. It has a source. Yeah. So, uh, we got, where y'all want to get started on this one? At the beginning? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Part four, The Return. Part four. A return to form for the franchise because yeah. everybody hated part three. <laughs> but now it's a fan cult favorite. <laughs> yeah, part four is uh, actually my favorite sequel of the series uh i don't know if it's because it's one of the first i saw or because i you know, i became a fan in 88 of horror and that was the one that was out <laughs> yep so uh i don't know i but i, I there's just i really like um the atmosphere of part four and that i, I really think it, it lives and breathes off of uh i mean well we get it's a good loomis movie for one for one absolutely Oh, yeah. And it's a good, uh, and I love Rachel and uh, and Jamie and their relationship and their chemistry uh, between Ellie and Danielle is really good. Uh, I don't, I don't even know where to, I, I'm. I've been throwing in shoehorn just to just to run this thing. <laughs> and usually I know how to talk, but I can't talk because I'm tired. I just watched Dracula. It put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great way to endorse a film. Yeah, <laughs> so that's we're not talking about Dracula, thank you. Um, so, uh, Seth, you're our Halloween guy. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Halloween Four. Halloween Four, uh, yeah, I, I I love it. Like I'm, I I love Part Three as well. So I'm not one of those people who hated Part Three because there was no Myers in it. But Part Four was a nice return to form for the franchise, and. <clears throat> Really, the only negatives I have about that movie are the mask and like the the pattern on George Wilbur's body. He kind of looked like a plush doll, but other than that, it was uh, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's, it's just a really good, it's very atmospheric movie. Um, they did they did good with that, and you know that ending was was awesome. There was no way for them to logically continue from that ending, but and make it good. But it was yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, because I, I can't imagine a little, you know, sequel with a little girl running around killing people. But I don't know. Um, let's talk about the mask since you brought it up, because that's usually one of the big, big things that. And I mean, like you said, you like it. You don't dislike the movie because of it. But there's so many people who like that's the reason they hate the movie. Yeah. And I'm like, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like you hate a movie, an entire film, because of a prop. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so. The, the the mask never bothered me. I actually dug it. I don't know. I well, don't it, hate it at all. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, though, because, like, he went to a random store and just grabbed one. It's like, it's like, in, in reality of trying to find him, Myers mask, you see all these fucking knockoffs that you can get, at, like, online or in stores, and they don't look good, you know? It's... <clears throat> you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, a realistic I'll, approach, yeah. Yeah, well... And also, it's been a couple of years, and manufacturing's got cheaper and cheaper. 
So it looks pretty, shittier. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one would be banned in, in Haddonville. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, it's just like like with after Scream came out. I mean, you could find all these. Yeah. ghost face like masks that they can't actually brand as ghost face or whatever and some of them don't look as good as the others i just think that it it made sense that the mask he got was just some random dollar store knockoff mm-hmm. um yeah. and but it, it didn't look good it didn't look good on him and you know it, it could partially be because of of how they lit michael throughout the movie too he was he was lit up pretty well throughout most of the movie anytime you saw him so yeah, that was, that was um, always my excuse. The mask was the same thing you just explained. The whole it's yeah. a different mask. It's, yeah, it's not like he had it stashed stashed somewhere. Yeah, it's brand <laughs> spanking new. Five on the other hand, yeah, what's the, you know <laughs> that thing is hard, you know horrendous, <laughs> and it's like it makes no sense. Like it just what it changed over a year. That latex <laughs> really moved around or something. I don't know. Uh, but I do really love Vincent Drugstore. I love that whole sequence of, of, of going and looking at Halloween costumes. That was a cool scene because, yeah, I mean, it's you still do it now, but part of the 80s going through, you're going to Walgreens or wherever the hell you're going, yeah. and you're going through those plastic Ben Cooper costumes and picking out one, and just the whole horror section with the mask, the little slow panning of a all the masks on the shelves and things is, is really room uh, that whole scene of, of vincent's drugstore which i really want to get uh, fright rags has a t-shirt right now they're selling a vincent drugs store yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i kind of want to get it i got like my my bud had and filled memorial thing on right now but um i want to get a fuck off weed shirt <laughs> <laughs> they have one don't they, do they have one I don't know. They I, should I, make them. One. I know they have the, uh, for, for what we're talking about right now, they have the Vincent Drug and they have a, the, what's the cookie cookie place in part five? The cookies. Oh, yeah. With or, the, the cookie woman. Gas station. Yeah, they woman. Got... <laughs> <laughs> cookies. Um, just yes. plug it away for you, Ben Scrivens. And, you know, so you don't mind. Sasha Jensen being, you know, ornery and then that scene is, is pretty fun. Yeah. Which, if you haven't seen the episode, we had him on uh, over a month ago now, right? Yep. Had some very interesting conversations. Yeah, that was a good episode. Um, so, what was the other thing? You said the the, the, the pads, the shoulder pads. Yes. They yeah. Looked, he really looks ridiculous, especially yeah. at the very end where he gets hit by the truck and gets back up. Like, yeah. Oh. Ka- Kayla was knocking the movie like the whole time she was walking, watching it with me. One, she hates Sasha's character. Which, I mean, he was kind of a douchebag. But it got to the part whenever he gets hit by the car, and she was just, like, laughing about, like, how he gets hit and stuff. I'm like, well, it's a, I mean, it's a yeah. dummy. Like, when he gets hit, he just goes, Koof. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jo- George Wilbur, who played him in this one, he looked he he looked great in part six when he played him again. He just had a different, different mask and a different set of coveralls, and it really shows... You know, yeah, he doesn't look like he's wearing pads. If he is, he just looks bigger. Yeah, like he's a bigger guy. Yeah. Um, uh, wasn't John Carl Beekler part of Part Six? Yeah, he did the. Uh, I think he did the mask and he did some of the effects. Well, that's probably why Jay he looks better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. So my again, I love Part Four, but it is. It does have its flaws. I, I'm I'm not I don't have a problem with. I mean the the, the padding is a little weird. Uh, the part that makes me cringe every time I watch it is the fight on the back of the pickup truck. Oh my god! Yeah, because I mean it goes on for like a t- minute or two and like no one notices. Like they're just in the truck. It's a yeah. pickup truck, man. And there's a fight. There's four men in the background in the back fight. And the thing is that one shot where the Michael's killing like the third of them or something. And there's a guy who's still just kind of yeah, looking forward. He's just in the, room. the back of the truck still. Just like, he's yeah. like he must like Pete nope. didn't have his hearing aids in or something and he doesn't feel motion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, as soon as it started, I mean, they all would have felt it. They would have all felt like, <laughs> right. like everything a two, happened. A, a 250 pound man climbing up into the back of a bed truck. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that guy that was still just sitting there was the guy named Earl because they yelled his name like 5,000 times in that movie. <laughs> and he just doesn't have his hearing aids in. 
Or maybe it was uh, maybe it was Ted Hollister, and they just propped him up. <laughs> it was Ted. <laughs> I can't leave him here. <laughs> you just got Ted Hollister. You dumb son of a bitch. You said it was Myers. <laughs> or where's Bucky? He's on it. <laughs> never once. Never once yeah. thought to look in the rearview mirror. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, we, we, we've talked about it a thousand times on the show. The opening, that's a, that's a opening credit to that film, yeah, just instantly. I don't know anyone who doesn't like that opening mm-hmm. and the 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 whole mood set. And it's 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 such an effective thing. I remember a, a guy I, work, I I did films with once said, "Oh, I don't buy into that atmosphere stuff. I, I don't think it matters. I mean, fuck yeah, it does matter. Like, it's just like eight shots of of rural illinois i guess it's salt lake city right it's it, it's in there in utah right is that where they shot it Somewhere yeah like that. yeah um but it's you know it represents the month october the the harvest everything and uh it's so effective it's just it's amazing how effective it is um and uh again so simple and you know we saw our friend renee who kind of obviously uh homage that in his uh his short um spirit of Haddonfield. Spirit, yep. Yeah, I really like yeah. that opening because it just leads straight into the movie. <laughs> but uh and we're gonna have him on later on this month um to talk about Haddonfield, the spirit of Haddonfield. Um well, let's get into Daniel Harris um and Jamie Lloyd. I mean what are your all's thoughts on on that character and her portrayal? I mean, this well, she's a little about ten or eleven years old when she did this. It's about it's 10. really it's really an really impressive performance. Yeah, I mean, for for a kid, I mean, especially in that like era or decade, year, whatever hell you want to call it. I mean, a, a lot of kids in those movies are completely awful, and half the time they're not main characters because kids couldn't really act that well. So, I mean, she does a really good job. I, I mean, in five, it kind of just, she kind of annoys me in five, but not well, her, her, not, but that's not her fault. fault. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just how her character's written in part five, making noises. Yeah, I mean, she, she's a kid, but she's a very iconic character mm-hmm. to the series, too. I mean. Yeah, I mean, if you a... see that clown outfit, you immediately, like, connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But there's not a weak spot in that performance. There's no scene where you're like, "Oh, child actor." I mean, it's it's and she's having and she's having to carry the movie many times, most of the time. I mean, it's it's especially uh, in the third act, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a lot. And 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 you know, like I said, part five, they took away her her ability to talk, which is you know, <laughs> doing a silent performance is hard for any actor. But you get an eleven year old kid in there to do that. Um, she pulls it off. I thought. Um, uh, her her best like scene for me is probably when they get to the schoolhouse, like when she's by herself just trying to find a door that's open. Uh, like she does and, the she does the fear well. Like she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It doesn't come off really bad or campy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know we can give up to the the director and the writer. I thought did a uh, Dwight Little was the director. And Alan McElroy was the writer. He didn't have a lot of time to write that script, did he? Because this was the same year as the as the uh, writer strike. The writer strike. Yeah. And didn't he have like a less than a month to write the script? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's very faithful. And and uh, going beyond the opening of the montage of locations and the, that great Alan Holworth score there that that opens it. We then cut to this very awesome yet hokey but cool opening at the hospital where they go to pick up Michael Myers, the the, para, the doctors, the paramedics, and you know they meet the guard and he's laying on that shit heavy. <laughs> you know, the, the hell, Jesus got nothing to do with this place, and you know, yeah, this is where society dumps its worst nightmares. I mean, the movie's got these great, almost they're all Lumen uh, Loomis type dialogue lines like uh, mm-hmm. and he's kind of playing a Loomis character in that moment in the way he's laying it on just like Loomis did in the first movie where he's laying it on to the nurse 
when they're driving out to pick him up. Um, and it's it's a great little moment. You're hearing screams, and it's 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 a it's you're going into a haunted attraction kind of feel, like you're going into hell, as he said, "Welcome to hell." Mm-hmm. And uh, even though it's kind of silly that Michael still has bandages on ten years later uh, from his burns, I mean they just. <laughs> <laughs> but um i do really love that scene uh going into and hearing that i, I really like the the way the score sounds the, the original halloween yeah. theme song used in that scene um so that's probably although favorite... go ahead i'll say that's probably my favorite part about four is is like we said the opening then you get the 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 leading scene with the security guard and the score like it gets you pumped for the movie it, yeah. better than some other movies. Like you were saying, the atmosphere does matter and it gets you wanting to watch the movie instead of just like, okay, I'm going to watch this thing because yeah. I have to be yeah. here. And he's <laughs> adopting that. He's adopting that, that blue lighting and orange lighting that Dean kind of used a lot in the original mm-hmm. film. Um, b- before we get too far, I do kind of want to go back to Jamie Lloyd. There's something that I want to say, but first, I think Jared had something to say about her, or he was starting to. Did you have something to say about Jamie Lloyd we were, when we were talking about Daniel Harris? It seemed like you were uh, going to say something. Oh, it's just the Jamie Lloyd character, but that kind of goes into part six and the continuity of it. Oh, okay. We can we can bring that up when we move on. Okay. So what I wanted to say about that is that's a very tragic character because you get, I mean, that poor fucking kid, you know, she lost her parents at a young age. She went everything through part four, then part five, and then she was captured for five or six years. And, yeah. you know, and then she, you know, dies. Like that's a, that's a character got the short end of the stick in the series. I mean. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's, it, she's as strong as Laurie Strode. And, and I think, um, it, it seems that the fan base does <laughs> like her, even though you know not all of the films are that beloved. I mean, these movies, I see, I don't see any universal feelings towards <laughs> these three films. I see very across the board people either hate them, think they're all shit, or they really like them, or some of them are even their favorites. Do you guys um, think that, like, with Jamie, like they should have, like, instead of having her being captured for five or six years by the cult like that they should have maybe like let her have like a little bit of a life and a little bit of a breather Mm -hmm. from all the michael stuff because they really hammered that character like ever since she was a little girl she went through all this trauma and bullshit like i don't know if they did the right thing when they did part six i guess that's a part six conversation yeah well i think we'll get to that one because that's a a heavy question (laughs) like like what what they were facing when they did part six as yeah. far as how part five just tainted them into the, the worst yeah. corner you possible mm-hmm. um for no fucking reason and and <laughs> um yeah fuck you guys it's like it's like when somebody you do that that exercise where somebody writes a paragraph and then you got to follow it and like someone just wrote the shittiest fucking paragraph ever like yeah all of a sudden a guy in black shows up with cowboy boots and uh has and a tattoo fun. You go. <laughs> yeah. How do I respond? <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, so Rachel, um, what do you guys think about Rachel Crothers? I think right away, like when she comes to talk to her on the couch. Um, I don't know. I just really like Ellie a lot in that role. She's one of my favorite final girls, partially because of her performance. I mean, you could tell she has empathy as a character more than a lot of other characters in these movies. A yeah. lot of a lot of the other characters in these movies kind of feel empty to me, but she actually genuinely feels like she cares about Jamie. Mm-hmm. Well, except, but but you also have the whole attitude of like it's my stepsister and I don't really care, but she does. She's being that I don't care teenager type. Yeah, but she but... also has her moments where she's selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. She's like a, a typical teenage, teenage uh, girl. I'm back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a very natural. It's, it's kind of questionable because she is our, our protagonist, and you know, people say you got to make us like the protagonist, 
and like you said, she does show signs of selfishness, but it's also very honest. Like you said, a teenage girl, she just wants to go on a date with her boyfriend. That's what mm-hmm. her life is, is, is I'm going on this date and right. this is a roadblock ruining my night. That's a natural, realistic reaction. No one's like, oh, fine. Yeah, I'll just give up on my plans and go. <laughs> First of all, I mean, I don't blame her. It is Sasha. Yeah. Yeah. So. And yeah, she gets <laughs> to go out with a, with a Josh Brolin's buddy. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was in the car when Biff hit the manure. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do, I do like, I kind of like that about, like you said, that it's that she is played honestly. It's not. It's not over exaggerated. It's real. Yeah, she's not. She's flawed, but she, she when it when it's time to do what she needs to do, she rises to the occasion. And she and like. When she's, you know, getting Jamie out on that roof and, you know, do this, we'll try, damn it. Not like there's, there's this, she be, almost becomes motherly in that scene mm-hmm. uh, of like your kids are whining and like, just do it. You know, you're going to die if you don't do this and, and falling off the roof and still coming back. I mean, she goes through, that's why I think part five also just really sucks ass because they just <laughs> totally shortchange that character they they not only take her out early but they take her out so ridiculously and easily after she literally goes through one hell of a fight if not the best fight in the series with, the, with the shape you know yeah i mean she fell off the fucking roof <laughs> and came and still like yeah. limped her ass to the school to save jamie you know she did everything she could to make sure Jamie was safe. I mean, yeah. Lori, Lori barely had time to react in the first movie, you know, and in the second movie, she's limping around the hospital half, half in and out of conscience, you know? And yeah, I mean, who, first of all, I've always had a thing for very strong women. And part of me wonders if it comes from a character like Ellie played in, in Halloween four, because she was amazing uh, taking care of Jamie and uh, fighting her way through everything. Uh I'm sorry if I came and ruined the mood, guys. <laughs> I did. Nobody's saying anything now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's not your fault, damn it. Another thing I want to say about part four is it's one of my favorite movie posters of all time. Yeah, yeah but, but it's false advertising. But, no, I mean, there's the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know you're joking. Like, yeah. that's that's one bitch it gets. It's like, oh, it's, it's not it's false advertising. Well, I'm I'm pretty certain. Haven't been a poster artist myself. They they made that poster before the movie was even shot, oh, because the sure. images are all from the first movie, and and that's what the artist had to go on. Because well, I, I mean, mean, you hear you hear people talking about it. they had the poster made before we even shot anything before the script. Yeah. You know, yeah, like I think Nightmare Four was that way. Yeah, one of them. Movie- movie was made fast so yeah. they had they commissioned that poster and that the artist just went off images from the first movie did you do a halloween it. 4 poster i've done a blu-ray in austria for it you know we're gonna have to see those right <laughs> i've done all of the halloween movies in some ways other than the rob zombie movies and the um and H2O. Nathan, you're just going to have to redo your Facebook and make an album and like Halloween, like just alphabetize all your crap so we can go look for all of it. <laughs> well, first of all, you just totally disrespected your crap. Come on, man. If you want, Nate, you can just uh, box them up or whatever and just mail them to me. Okay. I'll take care of them for you. Okay, I'll make sure you get them. <laughs> but I do have copies of the Austrian ones and they're you know they're, they're nice ones that they put out in Europe you know the, the, what they call it digi books or whatever yeah. Like, yeah yeah I did uh, see uh, your your Halloween covers there. I think they were for Germany like one per character those are really awesome yeah I did three through six I think for them and then they did Resurrection I did that and they finally got the rights for part two and I did that one then another company in Germany got the rights for Halloween and I did like five variants for that Jesus. So yeah, it's a uh, so. And some guy out there bought all five of them. <laughs> well, they're being bootlegged now. I see them everywhere now. Look, do you guys have a favorite scene from Part Four? Uh, it, it would probably it would have to be just Loomis's uh, Loomis at the crash, or it would have to be uh, playing the bus. Yeah, <laughs> or it would have to be. I think 
I hope I'm not getting the movies mixed up, but when Loomis uh, get, hitches a ride with the religious guy. Yeah, that's my, that's my favorite scene. <laughs> Reverend Sayer. Reverend Sayer. Yeah, it's like you're hunting it, aren't you? Yeah, hunting, aren't you? yeah that's a good scene. I just like uh, when he's like, you want a drink? And he just, just like, yeah. The scene, uh, the scene before that at the diner was really good, too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and Loomis, who's limping around, can still dive in behind some boxes when the thing's getting ready to explode. I just love yeah. the the my favorite thing about these movies is when I get a Loomis smile. It just uh, it just like brightens my day up. Like every time he smiles. Did you, did you just have a Loomis? Yes. There's a <laughs> and there's an epicness to to Loomis's journey to Haddonfield in this movie, where he has that conversation with him in the diner where he's facing him and he's telling him, don't go back to Haddonfield. Yeah. That's a great uh, scene, man. It's a great scene. And yeah. it's, a, it's a, it's a big scene. It's a big, it has a big feel to it. Like and, the reunion. Yeah. And that really defines Loomis for me too. Like the, mm. what he was saying to Michael, like he's, he is legit a good person. He doesn't want Michael to, to kill people. He's willing to sacrifice himself, you know? Yeah. And it is. It's a big. It's it's almost a big action movie feel to it. Even like when, you know, the the doctor's like at the at the crash, and he says, "Where are you going?" Haddonfield. You know, it's a four hour drive. If you don't find him, I'm sure I will. You know, like he's just like he's 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 done this before, and he knows, you know, and he goes back and. Um, that was the same shit. I, the same guy. Ten years later. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fucking John McClane. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, the Thayer scene, I just, it has like some of my favorite, di- I love that you can't kill damnation, mister, it don't yeah. die like a man dies. I know that, Mr. Thayer, you know, it's, it's this great little moment. Um, the Another person I love in the film is Ben Meeker. I love um, yes. O-Star. He's, a, he's an actor who, you know, pops up here, there, good fellows and you know, relentless, things like that. Um, but I really liked him in both films hey. yeah he's his i like his first interaction with uh with sasha that's one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised you don't have that shirt nate what cops do it by the book uh. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a good shirt to have right? i actually like meeker better than bracket as a character i think i do too mm-hmm. yeah there was one thing I was going to bring up, and again, I can't remember if it's four or five, but there's a scene where, like, Michael goes through, like, rams his arms through a window, but, like, for some reason his mask has blonde hair, and it's like he turned into Ben Tramer mask for, like, five, five seconds. Is that five? That's five, yeah. Okay. No, that was, uh, that that was four. four. Oh, no, that's the, at the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The school. Okay. The, um... Yeah, allegedly they didn't, no one on the set realized that yeah, they, Michael had, bleached they had the mask with the bleached hair. <laughs> Well, no, he was, he was offset. Michael was done filming, so he's like, I'm going to bleach blonde my hair. And <laughs> he's like, become yeah. a he's surfing down in fish, Florida. He's going to dye my hair. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm surfing out of Malibu. <laughs> Throw down to St. Salt Lake and do some pickups. What did I miss, by the way? Did I, did I miss anything good from you guys? No, it was all garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Big garbage. garbage. Um, so garbage. What, what about you? What is, what's one of your favorite scenes? Uh, I think my favorite scene is the the little fight between Brady and Michael. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I thought that was cool. It was a it was almost like a redeeming moment for Brady. It was, and he he's one of the few that went head to head. I mean, Buster Rhymes does, of course. Yeah, well, I think Brady was the first one in the series to actually throw fists at Michael. Right, so. and really fight back. Yeah. Yeah. Pierre, what about you? Um, I'm kind of like Keith. I might be mixing up four and five, but the cat and mouse in the house is that that's in five, isn't it? With Jamie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The laundry suit. That is a good scene though, too. Oh man, I thought it was, but the the party scene at the end of four, yeah, <clears throat> just that how everybody freaked out, like that. That was a really good part. See, now I'm on the page of which one was which. <laughs> That's five. Damn it. They're talking about the Halloween party. The party. The I missed the party. <laughs> Damn it. Farm? Are you talking yeah. about whenever Jamie's mom, she gets, she, she stabs her. She stabbed that bitch. Mm. Damn that it. Was a, that was a great ending. I love that ending. 
What is going on with Jared's camera tonight? Are we have a strobe light. It's only when he know. leans to his right. I know it's. Can we put a caution down at the bottom? <laughs> Anybody who has epileptic seizures. <laughs> 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 Then we go to part oh. five that ruined Loomis. Hey, you want to yeah. go? You want to go into <laughs> part five then? I think we we kind of we talked a little about part four when Sasha was on. Mm. Yeah. Well, can um, I say some things about part four before we move? Yeah, on? go ahead. Just do it. Man, I, I I love it. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> no, I know when I walked in, you guys were kind of talking about the the, the opening, and uh, I just want to add my little bit to that about how. Uh, how perfectly, and I know that's probably rehashing what you guys said, perfectly that sets the tone for the movie. Uh, it's, it's, you know, of course, the iconic opening from the first movie into the second and now 2018. That's great and all, but I, I think I prefer the part four opening overall. And everything between Lori and Rachel, I mean, you're talking about a teenage girl who has all of a sudden this, what, how old is she, 10, 9? Nine, Nine-year-old girl in her life that she didn't have before, that she's got to take care of her. I get it. And, um, I will say I do love how Michael was comatose for 10 years. It, you know, he just, he thought his job was done for the most part, I guess. And then he finds out he has a niece and sticks a thumb through somebody's forehead. That's amazing. <laughs> um, oh, what, uh, no, it re remind me of, uh, uh, for any Batman fans out there, The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, when Batman retired, the Joker went comatose. And that's kind of what it reminded me of. When, when Batman came back, he had a reason to live again and that's kind of what i felt like with michael in this one and and boy is he a force in this movie you know i he throws that guy into the electric thing to knock out the entire head yeah that was something i was going to bring up was at this time he he he's intelligent he mm -hmm. he takes out the electricity he takes out the police department he takes out everything that he's can like, get i got four way. hours on loomis i got time to set up yeah <laughs> so it's, it's it's really uh, an interesting thing in that this time and and the whole and the whole history that everybody has so you have all the bar people like hey you know let's go out and form a lynch mob because yeah. we're not we've, we there's history now it's mm -hmm. not just oh a kid killed his sister 15 years ago and went to the same so it's like no this guy killed 16 people you know and uh we know we're not gonna let that happen again uh but he's one step ahead of them he's taken out the electricity he's taken out communication he's taken out the police force yeah. leslie, um, vernon, leslie vernon must have watched a lot of halloween for <laughs> well according to leslie vernon michael myers existed in his world yeah i mean yeah. at least uh what's it was like oh you know mike and jason and fred <laughs> uh yeah i mean he was he, did, he, he got to do a lot more stuff in this and Maybe he had, he was biding his time, just laying there waiting, like he did before, you know. And I don't I don't want anybody to ever call Halloween for just another Halloween movie because they did more things in this with Michael. They they were able to show evolution in, in the character that where where the others really don't do that, you know. Uh, he had ten years. He he knocks out the power, like we said. He takes out the. It's like he's checking off boxes. To, you know, to get away with what he's trying to do. I mean, I of course, dealing he with the same shit again. Yeah, it it always surprises me when when I hear someone say the part four is terrible and they don't like it or it's not good oh, yeah. at all, and it's it's always kind of confused me. I mean, again, a lot of it comes to oh, the mask sucked. I'm like, okay, if that's all it takes for a movie to fail for you, then you know. And and we do see that we see people like, hey, there's a movie coming out and they've released the what the mask looks like or what this looks like, and like I don't like that. I don't want to see that movie now. I mean, like, people, people did. I remember that happening a lot when the uh, Scream TV series came out, which I don't know if any of you watched it. It was actually yeah, pretty. Yeah, it was actually pretty. Stuff. It was actually pretty fun series. But yeah, people bitched about that like crazy, yeah, the, and they didn't the even mask watch thing, it. Practical. It was a practical mask. Also, bitch about the mask all you want in Halloween Four. It's a new fucking mask. <laughs> he goes and take the goddamn mask. It's not the same one. He didn't hide it in the floorboards, okay? Yep. It's a different mask. His old mask, that's that's my question. What happened to his old mask after part two? It burned up, right? Yeah, it burned. Fucking mask. I'm just saying. Yeah. It just brings up the whole thing that hey, Michael should have never returned because he should have to put him out. 
<laughs> it would have been, been cooler if they would have went the route of like his mask was burnt to his face after part two. That would have been really cool, but also he was not burnt up in part four because he yeah. was a four or five. He he the mask comes off at one point in one of them. Oh yeah, he's fine. And he's gorgeous. <laughs> and he, he's got like this he just bloated, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> he absorbed its energy. Not, not Dick Orlock size anymore. Addressing the mask, though, I don't mind this mask, especially compared to the, the one in five. Uh, Seth, how about you, man? Yeah, uh, we we actually kind of talked about this when you were gone. Um, Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier the same thing. You know, he was grabbing a new mask. He went to uh, what is it, Vincent Drug, and he yeah. just got some cheap knockoff mask of the original design you know it it makes sense in the in the context of it it doesn't look good at all i think that in the movie michael actually looked a little bit scarier like in that one scene where he's at the garage and he had the bandages all over his face you know he's standing over the guy and yeah yeah i like that way more yep it would have been cool to just use that yeah. Be more reasonable, yeah, but then like, fans will bitch about that because yeah, they're like, Whoa, like, we need the mask. We yes, the mask. Ask you something if he grabbed a fucking clown mask, like some ridiculous, you know, you've seen, I'm sure people have seen, I've seen some of the masks that they wanted to use originally. It's like, what if he wore a fucking clown mask, you know, like, like he looked like one of the killer clowns from space? Well, what I mean, would we, you do then? I don't know. I mean, we see him where that other mask in part five the like old man mask in the car yeah, yeah. Th- that was ever so briefly i think they were really careful not to change a lot of things because they were all about pleasing the fans oh after, yeah these are totally you know, fan service movies <laughs> and, and, yeah and, and i think that's why like they it's pretty much why they rejected uh dennis etchison's script for part four is because not only was it more of a ghost story Michael is more of a, you know, manifestation of fear, but he, you know, he was wearing a black coat and a black shirt as a pair, as opposed to coveralls. And I don't know, I, I think they were just too, they, they wanted to make sure that they were trying to suck off as many fans as possible who were mad about Halloween 3. Well, they had to make sure their money was safe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, from what I understand, it's not even just about the fans with the uh, the blue or the green the, the the suit that he wears. It's breathable. It's easy to move in. I mean, that's why he. I know I get in his head when I watch these movies. I, he chose that for a reason. It's easy to move in. He's used to it. <laughs> he always finds the right size. He does. <laughs> size. Well, he's an average human being, right? He's not zombies where he's that's, six foot. That, that's what we need. We need a fan fan film where it's just a, like. A short fan film of Michael Myers just walking around different garages looking for someone his size. Yeah. <laughs> how, long, how long did it take him to find, you know, Ken <laughs> Foray in the remake? It's like, right. Damn, I got to go to a truck stop because these guys are all small. <laughs> well, think about it. Loomis leaves, says it's a four hour drive to Haddonfield. He catches up to Michael. Mm-hmm. And, like, did Michael make stops on the way? Did he? Where did he get, he get gas, gas, gas money? And <laughs> I mean, I mean, even Michael has to take a potty break. Right. Exactly. He's he's he. <laughs> did he have a burger before he went on the road and killed people? Right. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't eat. He doesn't eat burgers. He doesn't eat cows. He eats dogs. Did he? Did he have a dog burger or a rat burger like in uh, Demolition Man? Pretty good. He probably did. Yeah. Are we on are we on five now? Jesus yeah. Christ, what's with you in five? What kind of are you? You're sitting here talking chicks and comics and you bring up <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I did the wrong line wrong. Yeah, let's let's go to five because I'm not a huge fan of five. Back in the old days, I loved it. You know, I didn't think anything of it. And then one one day I watched it and I'm like, why in the hell is Tina so important to Jamie? That's where I want to start with this if you guys are okay. Because at first originally I thought maybe they recast the girl that drove Tina and, and uh, Rachel to the store to get ice cream or whatever. You know, the girl mm-hmm. picks them up. Cool. Lindsay like, Wallace. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, but no, it's, it's nothing like that. This is a whole new character that, that is more important to Jamie than Rachel. It seems like Rachel saved her life countless times a year ago. And no, she's more concerned about Tina. <laughs> Just so, I can be like, hey, I don't like the character, but you're very pretty. 
Yeah, I get what you're saying. I didn't understand that either because when I was watching yesterday, I thought the same exact thing. I like went on IMDb. I'm like, are these supposed to be the same characters? Is it a recast? Yeah. I don't understand. Why did they? Do, do we know why they decided to kill Rachel off so early? Uh, it, I don't know. It could have to do with money or the actress had to. It could. It could be or... that was her support system, you know, and it's immediately cut off. That kind of thing. It would. It would have been so much better though if, like, they kill her off at the end, like the the way that Tina died. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, because like in in a way, you're kind of expecting Tina to live to be that final girl teenager that lives and the fact that she actually dies that could have been that could have been rachel and it could have been a very powerful moment but the people who came in to make halloween 5 they were brought in really quick after halloween 4 was a success and they had no fucking idea what they were doing they didn't it's, it's you watch that movie they it's like they didn't, haven't even watched a fucking halloween movie before yeah <laughs> That's what it feels like, and they and if you listen, to them, I mean, the director, he he just didn't have any interest in in doing whatever, sticking yeah. to continuity or anything like that. It was just, oh, right, we're gonna do this, and now the Myers house is the Munsters house, and and yeah, yeah. and all these kind of shit. It's like, no, like they said, oh well, we could we didn't we shot it in Canada, so we didn't have the other house. Like, you have a Hollywood production, you could build a facade. That Myers house is so simple. It wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have cost you shit to make the facade of the Myers house. And it, it doesn't even have to be accurate either. I mean, if you look yeah. at the house in part six, it looks similar to a certain degree, but similar it's enough. different. Similar enough to make it think that, that it looks like. I mean, plus, if you think about it, it's, at that point, it's been 17 years. So it, it renovations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's still in Salt Lake City, the area where they filmed the mo- all three of those movies. Yeah. But, but, the house in part five holy fuck like yeah they just wanted to do that so they could do that sequence i think at the end with the with the hanging laundry shoot. yeah yeah the yeah the dumb waiter laundry shoot yeah which i thought was probably my favorite part of the movie yeah that's a great oh, scene good scene yeah it's a good, really good part i mean actually everything that happens in that house and then trying to catch michael and the, with the chains and loomis beating the shit out of him that's that was, <laughs> really good scene just beating him with the board giving himself a heart attack i will say uh, i will say one good thing about the movie like right off the bat is i like the opening of halloween 5 like i like the the flash images and quick slashing yeah i I like that setting up the the Uh, jack-o'-lantern i I liked it although i don't like that he just like comes out of the back of the mine shaft or wherever the hell they were and like no one ever like hunts down the body yeah wait a second do you have a part four mask behind you I have one, yeah. Is that that's, right behind you to your left? Yeah, that's it. I can't. They all look the same to me. <laughs> yeah, I, in the background. I like how they explain how he is escaped and everything, but like, we knew there was going to be a Halloween 5 anyway. I mean, there are. <clears throat> Five is probably my least favorite out of these three, but there are things I like. Like I do like the whole uh, Michael in the old man mask and him driving the car. Kayla was watching that with me. She was like, "He knows how to drive a car." I'm like, "I'm gonna slap you." <laughs> he drives a car in the first movie. Damn it! Oh man, I remember that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite movie going experiences. I went and saw when I, when H2O came out. And that beginning where he drives the muscle car out of the dri- the garage guy behind me goes what all of a sudden michael could drive a car and i'm sitting there thinking i said i i, I thought about it 10 seconds late because i wish if i had been in the moment i would have said he was doing very well last night <laughs> <laughs> my question with h2o we'll get the h2o eventually but uh how did he know how to get out all the way out to where Lori was hey california he had a map he had gas money he had yeah i mean yeah well, he didn't need gas money. He just killed people on the way. Like, I'd like to see that movie. What happens between when he leaves Illinois and goes to California? Michael what? Road Trip. Michael Road Trip. Yeah. He had Map Quest. There was no Map Quest back then. Was there not? No, well, this was 1998. This was really like before the internet was really a thing. I know, but yeah. I thought okay, I thought Map Quest though was like a print off service you could do. Michael Myers hasn't done anything since like 1963 that has anything to do with technology. Like, yeah, he's like Jay. What the fuck is the yeah. internet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. Halloween five is like my least, it's one of my least favorites in the series, period. Um, it sucks because it's sandwiched in between two, one really good movie and a decent movie. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, yeah. I mean, like, you know, like I, I've told you guys before, my preferred timeline that I go to is what I call the Loomis saga, which is one, two, four, five, and six. But five, like all the characters are just so unlikable. And in the movie, like I was watching it last night and I was trying to find positives. <laughs> I did not succeed, but I tried. Positives. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and and it, the, the movie looks like it takes place in like, I don't know, early September. Like it, oh, it, yeah. Yeah. it, it doesn't have a fall feeling at all. And just all the characters are unlikable, though. There's the clown music with the cops. Oh, God. Yeah. The Keystone it, cops. It, yeah. And then just all that bullshit that they just kind of threw in there with the man in black. Uh, I don't know. I forgot all about the fucking music with the cops. And he kicked a dog. Keith, yeah. how did uh, your wife. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. As soon as that happened, she was like, fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I forgot about, like, because I don't. Four and five are probably my least watched halloween movies except for resurrection i've seen that movie like twice it's crap but i didn't i forgot all about the animal stuff so like i forgot about the possum like falling out of the fucking laundry chute and then uh oh, fuck I, think, a possum. I think there was a dog too wasn't there i don't know but he kills the no he doesn't does he kill their dog in five yeah i think so i can't remember pretty sure it was it wasn't it hanging i don't remember yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. I mean, I've seen five so many times, it, but if I watched it and I wasn't a big Hall Halloween fan or anything like that, I think it'd be the most forgettable Halloween movie out of all of them. No, I mean, and they cut some good stuff out because apparently Don Shanks, the guy who plays Michael, um, he he said there's a scene where he takes on like a SWAT team outside of the uh, the kids' home and like tears them apart. Like I'd rather see that than most of the shit that happened in this movie. Apparently, yeah. there's, uh, some kind of uh, group that was supposed to like, I guess they were members of the Thorn Group or whatever. They were like witches or something that were supposed to help them come back to life or some shit. They cut yeah. that out. Yeah, they had the original opening scene that um, that they cut with some guy named like Doctor Death or something like that. Yeah, that's it, Doctor Death. Yeah, he, like he like tattoos the Thorn symbol on Michael. Yeah. Like, well, that would make sense. Okay, so, so, they, so that would have made it more like Michael was a psychopath and then he died and then they used black magic to bring him back with Thorn. So it wasn't yeah, Thorn the I, entire time. Yeah, I, I think that's what they were going for was that he died from his wounds at the end of uh, 4. See, and they brought him back. Sense. But still, I mean, everything they did in 5, it just kind of really backed the series into a corner. Like, it, yeah. I agree because with four you got a movie that that adds to the mythology without messing up what came before it. And five just shits over everything. I hate saying that because I don't like being oh the last Jedi shit on all of Star Wars, but the Halloween five kind of did. Am I wrong? I'm asking Nate on this because Nate's the guy that hates when people do that. Did they shit on the rest of the Halloween <laughs> movie? They, I mean, again, most of the movies. This is where I have a problem with canon because we have to accept or just buy into whatever person comes along to do the next installment so this guy just pulls shit out of his ass doesn't care about anything and now it's canon so we need to always like in, in part six is completely fucked because of it and like and, 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 and in my opinion like they should just start it over dimension bought it or whatever just start anew just fuck five, you know, like to fall like because some people like when people come back and they want to see a, a follow up to a movie that is dead and gone, didn't do that well. I mean, that movie didn't do well enough to fucking follow it. There were there were there were you know? one movie too late in that what you're saying because they kind of started over with H two O. They probably should. You're probably right. They probably should have waited and started over uh, after five. Five did paint them in a the corner, and that's like I like six, and the producer's cut is better, but. The reason six is bad, if at all, I think it's wonderful. But the reason why six is bad is because of five, because they had to try to fucking clean up what happened in five, just like the rise of Skywalker sucks because they had to, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just messing around. But no, that's, that's how I feel about it because they, they've even said, people have said they painted themselves into a corner with five 
and that's the best they could do, I guess. There, there is another script for six out there floating around, but right, Seth. Correct, and it's worse. Way worse. <laughs> is it though? Probably. It is, but based I mean, on with, what I read, it is. With uh, with both scripts you know, of Halloween Six that we got and the one that um, got rejected, thank God, um, they both had similar approaches where they were kind of going back to material that was kind of present throughout the series. So what I mean by this is, I don't know if you guys have read or listened to the audio book of, of the first novel uh, of the, uh, the novelization of Carpenter's film. Yeah, let's say that's but, where uh, the What's the his name? Uh, with Curtis Richards or something like that. I think. Now th there's a lot to do with the, uh, the festival of Sawan and um, with, with. Don't you mean Sam Hain? <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with Colts and yeah, and exactly. And that was enough where Carpenter took some of that put it in his script for Halloween too, because there was a mention of that, you know, of course, Luma says Sam Hain instead. And then, you know, that stuff is in part three. So it is, that stuff has been present in the series, kind of like in the, in the background. Yeah. But then when they did it for yeah. five and six, they were kind of, you know, especially with part five, by giving us these big questions that needed to be answered they really brought all that shit up to the forefront and it it kind of took away from the mystique of Halloween and uh, of Michael being the shape, you know. Yeah, better not to explain it. Why, right, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, we've already gotten a whole brother sister thing at that point, but the uh, explaining the evil, I mean, I, it's not it's not an awful idea that <laughs> <laughs> you know that there it, this is all part of a, a celtic curse thing i mean i don't i don't hate the thorn uh edition uh as much as some people do uh part six is just a mess technically and editing wise and it's it, I, and I know there's a lot going against it and having to recut it having to uh, having to cut and then redoing it and Donald Pleasant's passing away and all these things that like it just when you watch at, I used to really like it and I think a lot of it was because it was six years until another Halloween movie came out at that time so I was just excited because I saw part six like three times in the theaters I just kept going I was in college I got to see it before it came out <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna I'll tell, I want to tell a story but go ahead okay yeah and I just I but and I liked it and I, a lot of the reason I liked it was for I thought the masks looked cool. I liked the autumn, October look of the film. Mm -hmm. I, I thought Paul Rudd was excellent. Um, but, and I liked that Tommy Doyle was a character period in it. Um, but the more and more I watch it over the years, it's just it's just a fucking mess of a movie. It's just it's too many cooks in the kitchen on that one. Yeah, it's way too much problems going on to make. So I get why people like it and it is, it's a hugely popular one um but it's hard to watch just because of what a, it's just nonsensical it doesn't it doesn't work because it's so chopped up it's so things aren't explained and things are just which um it's cuts. just a big mess huh? which, which led to two cuts that's why there are two cuts yeah. you know? and neither one are are perfect or, good, or really well, neither one of them are great but um, you gotta admit it the producer's cut's a little bit better the music's better even even the color grading's better in that in the producer's cut because it it, it looks more fall than this than the original uh theatrical cut i do wish the producer's cut had that theatrical cut third act though with michael and all those surgeons at smith's grove and all that that would because I uh, it, the way the producers cut ended with the the stones and the runes and Michael was gone. It was very anticlimactic for the movie. With Tommy beating him with a pipe and green ooze coming out of his face was probably better. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> uh, Doctor Loomis's send off was very good uh, in that. I didn't like that he had the thorn uh, symbol on his arm. Um, <laughs> the things I like about six. Are we done with five? <laughs> We should be. <laughs> you say anything about five? I mean, other than you love the scene at the tower farm. The tower farm. I mean, other than the fucking sex scene is fucking noise after noise after noise after noise, and it's 
There's no, there's not even like music. It's just lip smacking and breathing and. Yeah, obviously this guy had intercourse before because that's how exactly how it is. There's no music. There's just coughing and breathing. (laughs) Hey, that's your choice not to play music. It is my choice. I like to hear myself. (laughs) Fit fit and bring his radio and put on Barry White. Yeah, just kittens and 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 Tamra. Those characters, the, the characters in Five are just the worst. None of them are likable, really. I mean, the boyfriend, the the, the guy that drives the car. I mean, Mike. Mike. Can you name him they, something else? Could they not have cast like somebody a little more outlaw looking or something? Like the guy looks like a nerd to me. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> I I do have to say my favorite scene in Part Five. Okay, I found one positive. Okay. Is Mike is so obsessed with his car, and how does Michael get his attention? He fucks it up. He takes that fucking thing yeah. and fucking. I love it. I, I I crack up every time. It's like Michael Myers has a sense of humor. I do. I do like the scene with the mask picking Tina up because it is creepy when she kisses him and his eye looking over. It's creepy. It is a creepy thing. That is a good grip yeah. the wheel. Yeah, I just like it when she's like, "Stop! I want to get a pack of cigarettes." He just fucking slams on his fucking brakes and throws it in reverse. <laughs> Okay, two positives. <laughs> I will. I will say another thing that's entertaining to me. I don't know really if it's a. It's not really a scene, but the, the guy that works at the convenience store, the other girl's boyfriend, his laugh is absurd, and it makes me <laughs> laugh. It's well, you really analyze those two characters, didn't yeah, you? I did. I don't know the why. Two blonde characters. What were their names? I don't remember their names. Uh, Spitz and uh, yeah. Uh, what the hell was her name? I don't Samantha. know. Samantha, isn't it Samantha? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They all suck. Anyway. There's always a Samantha. They're just there. Oh, the one. There's another part in the movie that's awful. The part where Tina and Samantha, I think, are in the park talking, and Michael's just like walking around in the yeah. background. In the tree, <laughs> like, what's he doing back? There? It's so stupid. Wait a second. I gotta watch that again. Was it Michael Myers? Yes, it's yeah. Michael. He's just like yeah. walking around a tree back in the background watching. Oh my god, it. I have to I've never seen that. I gotta watch yeah. look for it's, that. It's that hilarious. Yeah. They're like sitting on a bench, aren't they? Did They're he not know he was in frame or was he not was <laughs> it's almost, like, it almost feels like like oh am I supposed to come? No, no, back back behind the tree. Or was Don Shanks on a smoke break? Was so <laughs> according to the behind the scenes, they did a lot of partying at night. <laughs> God. <laughs> that uh so many problems let me ask you guys a question we'll see what what would you have done after part four for a part five i mean you could do anything you want with a part four or part five after part four what would you do differently uh we'll definitely keep the mask the same oh my god i wouldn't i wouldn't make jamie lloyd's character a mute that's for <laughs> sure have the same scenario, but she's definitely traumatized and has PTSD. Well, it, she could be a mute. Uh, I mean, if they really wanted to follow the ending of part four, she could be a mute and, you know, she's in a sanitarium uh, looking at the wall, looking past the wall and all that. Hor- happy <laughs> shit. Yes. Right. I would have liked it. Like, I, I could have seen something kind of like an Exorcist 3 kind of thing where she's in, in the institution and just her her essence and her soul or all these things like that there's that the shape manifests from her own like act, her ability like that he just appears oh, and like she, it's in her mind yeah and like dr loomis is like talking to her in the asylum like where is he? you know where he's at and i mean he does it a little bit in the part five but it could have been um that she was more involved that she wasn't just a victim that she was now part of it of whatever it was because uh, that was such a fantastic ending in part four yeah. And and the the reaction that Loomis has to it and and that's that's that image of Jamie at the top of the stairs with those not the scissors. Yeah. Uh it's a shame that like it just it really kind of goes, goes nowhere. It's kind of just a thrown away. It was back. a wasted ending, in my opinion, with, yeah. with the scissors and everything. It's, I mean, like, it's just like uh Friday the thirteenth, where you think at the end of part five, maybe Tommy's gonna be the killer. You I mean, know, he's got the mask on, he's holding the knife up, maybe yeah. kill him. Like and the only I, I mean, I, I could kind of see yeah. where they didn't want to do a movie with a little kid serial killer, but they could have done, like I said, uh, Jamie Lloyd at Smith's Grove um, going through all the same type of stuff that Michael went through, and then you could have Michael coming for it. I would have, what I would have done was do that and have the entire movie take place at Smith's Grove. That would have been kind of cool. 
<laughs> it could be uh, called uh, Halloween Five. Welcome back home to Smith's Grove. Uh, do before we move on to six, uh, is do we have any good comments? And so when I say good comments, I'm asking you people watching, you good people, you fine people. There's good people on both sides. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, to, to give us some good comments. What do we got? Anything good? Uh, let's see. Lisa Costa says part six is my favorite. Uh, especially the Overall? Fisher's Cut. Uh, I mean, she might be talking about just the trilogy. Um, David Gill's atmosphere is important to many, many horror films, I feel. Ted Higgins said, should have never done a cult thing, although after five, I was super excited for six to see what this man in black was about. And, well, I hated it. Had to wait a bunch of years for this. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hall said, so is Loomis good and doesn't want people to get hurt, question mark, or is he just obsessed with stopping Michael? I think it's both. I think at part four, like I said, I talked about, like when he says don't go to Haddonfield, He's, he doesn't want people. He doesn't want people to live through that night. He says that's a win. Does there somebody? I don't want people to have to live through that night that I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he he's concerned about the people there. He doesn't want to see innocent people in the way to get yeah, killed. And I know in part five he was very abusive and very like he was you know going to smack Jamie around a little bit, but. Like uh, some people have kind of defended that. Like I have a couple friends that defended that where this is old, tired Loomis at the end of his mm -hmm. rope. I still don't like asshole Loomis, but I guess I can. Yeah. Yeah. When he, yeah, like, gets, it, when he like, gets in Jamie's face and is like, tell me. <laughs> but, uh, Jesus, and back they, off, it, man. It creates some really nice scenes, though. Like I like when after Tina's been killed, and, you know, he's like, you got to do this. And she. Uh, Jamie says, "What do you want me to do?" Yeah, like, like she says, "All right, I, I have to face my destiny," kind of thing. Like I, he's mm -hmm. he's killing all these innocent people because of me. When she like tells him, "Here, here," when he's trying, she's trying to detract her from killing Tina. Yep. Uh, I like little moments like that. I like when Michael talks to him in the woods and tells him to go home. Oh, that's actually one of the best things. Yeah, that's one of the best yeah. things in the movie. Yeah, and yeah. then I, I, one of my favorite lines in the movie is when he's like sabotage, like gotten all the cops to go away, and he breaks the radio, and he, that guy, what's the guy's name? The the cop, uh, he just, Charlie. he says, Charlie, Michael Myers is outside. Like, it's, it's a terrifying line. You know? well, I, I like, <laughs> me and Kayla are laughing about it, but it's the part where the the cops are like hiding in the bushes, and they're like, can you see you from the road? Can you see you from the road? And like every fucking scene, they keep moving. I'm like. Of course he's gonna fucking see you. <laughs> and then I like how Loomis is like, he can hear you also. He's like, this is my show, Loomis, and he's like, all right, everybody be quiet. Oh yeah, but like I don't know if he can, but we start everyone else certainly can, or yeah. something like that. What he says, yeah. Uh, Alex Vanover said, I always love these movies. David Gill said, I still would like to see Halloween turn into an anthology series with two being the yeah. last Michael Myers mm -hmm. movie. It, I think it would have been cool. I, I agree. Even though I like some of the other movies we did. Um, Chris Hall said, Halloween 14, The Search for Overalls, The Night He Got Dressed. The yeah. problem with the anthologies, though, like if you do a series like that, because the whole point of sequels is people want to see the same thing. That's why they get remade. That's So that's why people say if Halloween Season of the Witch hadn't been called Halloween, people would like it. Because the whole, again, they make sequels because people want more of the shit they just loved. Mm -hmm. So when you change it dramatically, when you take characters out, when you, it's uh, people are disappointed. So like the whole point of uh, an anthology with the same title, unless that's the nature of it going in, like a Tales from the Crypt series, like a TV show is different, but a film yeah. anthology, I mean, it's if it's all different, then it doesn't even need to be part of the anthology. It's like. Mm -hmm. That's make true. it the original movies yeah i mean i mean uh, trankus and whoever has the the distribution rights they can still do their myers movies and they can still produce like halloween presents movies and do original stuff you know have everything you know from the same producers and whatever you know get john carpenter back in and hey let's pitch some ideas of what to do for an, for this movie or that movie you know have two different series going yeah, was, uh, I could see that if you're restarting it at its own entity thing. 
Right. So, but, so they'll do a Myers movie, then an anthology movie, then a Myers movie, then an anthology movie, something Skywalker like that. Skywalker movie, then an anthology movie, a Skywalker. <laughs> Rogue One. <laughs> Halloween. Well, I mean, didn't they, they tried that with Freddy's Nightmares back in the 80s? Yeah, but that was a show. Well, I mean, based off of what you guys are talking about, it could it could work like that. I'm not saying Fred, work it out. I think there is. I'm not sure. saying Freddy's Nightmares worked out great, anyways, but we all know it did. It was well, great. I mean, well, Jared's right. I mean, you, there's many different stories you can have take place on Halloween. I don't yeah. see why the the Trankus doesn't capitalize on that. But. Maybe they're not thinking about it. Maybe they need somebody from the horse and to c- come work for them. They do. <laughs> Alec, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> your father is disappointed in you no oh, that's harsh do you think he would have liked the rob zombie movies no the rob zombie movies were made because of because of that you know like malik mm-hmm. wanted to keep the series going but he wanted to leave his father's legacy as those movies and just do something different with it didn't really work out for him so much, but we talked about that last time. All right. Any more comments before we move on to six and get into six pretty pretty deeply? So I'd like to throw all mine deep into six. I'm I'm, I'm ready for six because it's my favorite. Okay. Let's talk about Halloween six a little bit more. I know we already started on it, but I had to backtrack to five because I'm all over the place tonight. I got to see Halloween 6 in, uh, the day before it came out because my mom's uh, best friend ran in one of the local theaters which had a balcony so he let me sit in the balcony by myself and watch Halloween 6 brought me all the popcorn I wanted you know all the Dr. Pepper I wanted it was awesome and uh, I, I loved it right away I was it's it's like Nate when we talk about you know I don't care it's Star Wars Star Wars is back it was Michael Myers was back Halloween was back yeah, like you said, we've been waiting six years to see a new Halloween, and I was my, my blinders are on. Watch the movie. I love the the seeing you know things from the Strode point of view at this point, you know. And then it, it made me wonder why didn't the Strodes take in Jamie <laughs> when Lori died? <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I. I well, the, yeah, this the, is the selfish Strode. I mean, yeah, but there's still his brother was still alive, right? Mason and whatever. I don't know if they had names back then, but they, they were still because his brother that was his brother that was uh, not not the not Lori's dad or right. or whatever. Jamie Frick. But the, why why didn't they take why didn't they take? That's technically Jamie's grandparents. Yeah, Jamie wasn't a bastard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so yeah go ahead slipper more money no respect <laughs> around here anymore Arrest my kids. worst character in this entire series that guy or mike or, or buster rhymes that guy's worth listen buster rhymes is fine because he said the the uh, the debate the other night was worse than his performance <laughs> i saw that was like uh, i wait for, for rooster cogburn to show up and take his ass out for fucking with maddie but I don't know. I, I just always have wondered that though. Why why didn't Jamie ever go to the Strodes? And not that it matters, but like when they bring the Strodes back in the movie, I'm like, why isn't is Jamie gonna be here? Because I know what happened. We know what happens at the end of five. Five's left off with a jailbreak. You know, Michael is looking pitiful, then there's the jailbreak, and oh no, what happened? And then we open up six, whichever version you watch, either way, it's the same. There's this cult. Uh, there's a baby that Jamie had with Michael. Yuck. Yep. I just realized that earlier, by the way. I got yeah. a theory about that, by the way. Okay. What's the, what's the theory? Okay. So, like you guys, I can't imagine at any point Michael pulling down his coveralls and going to Pound Town, right? <laughs> we, we were literally, so, me and Kayla were literally having a discussion earlier. I was like, here we could do a seen- Google search and find an example. Have you so- seen pictures of <laughs> Michael? I, I, I got one somewhere. Let me find it. <laughs> so what, what I'm thinking is, is they they tranquilized Michael, right? The cult did. Oh God. 
Someone went in, they gave him a little hand, okay? God. Give him a little Mickey. He, he splooged into a cup, and then they, they pulled a turkey seat based of, They pulled a seat of Chucky. Before seat of Chucky, <laughs> they, they, they were ahead of the curve. This is my, just my theory, okay? They had a turkey baster. <laughs> okay, guys, do not look up sexy Michael Myers on the <laughs> Ooh. There is a disturbing image of a guy in a Michael Myers mask, nude, <laughs> wearing uh, nothing don't else. That up. You, you, need some, you, need, you need to leave. You need to leave again, Ray. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I got to stay here because I, I'm thoroughly unhappy with what I just saw. <laughs> it's not even the real Michael. So, uh, <laughs> since, since we're on the very beginning part of the movie, like, how old is she supposed to be? I mean, I get it's supposed to be six years later, timeline wise. So she's like 17, well, said, 16 they, years old. They, I remember because I thought because Danielle was 10 or 11, but Rachel says she's seven in, in part four. That's what gets me. Like, I don't not know seven eight. years old in that movie. She said you're trying to win the all time seven year old record or something for like insomniacs or something. And, and then in uh, part five, Tina says that uh, Jamie is 11 years old. Wow, that's a big jump. There, there's a, there's a uh, I think when she's talking to Loomis. Okay, first of all, I believe Tina way more than Rachel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think you'd say that? <laughs> she's She's got to be closer to 11. She does not look like a seven. My daughter's seven. She doesn't look like Jamie. Not just because she was so short, probably. Yeah, there's no, no, well, Danielle Harris is short. But I mean, in real life, I think she is Nate. She's about your age, isn't she? About 44, 45. Yeah, she's about, I think she's maybe a year, year younger. Yeah, yeah. 55. I think she's like 43. Yeah. Yeah, she's not much older than I am. Uh, so I would say, let's see, I'd say 11 if it's supposed to be six years. Old. So she's 17 ish. So maybe? I mean, that, I guess that part makes sense. I was just going from what happened in part four. Right. Right. Like, but if she was like, if she was 11 in part five, she would be 10 in part four. I mean, she would have had to have been born in 1978. Maybe Rachel was just jabbing at her. Seven year old. You're a seven year old. Right. I'm just saying though, like even in general for her to be 10 in part four, she would have had to have been born in, uh, in seven. But she in, really, in, yeah, oh, she couldn't before. have been 10 years old. Cause Jamie, yeah. Like this is 10 years after the event. That was the continuity part that I was talking about earlier. It just doesn't make sense to me. What? The detective you know, you the guys. I've just ruined it. Let's, 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 I'm, I'm going to say she was she was nine. I'm not going to pay attention to what they say. In my brain, she's nine in, in part four, okay? Lance, <laughs> yes. The starfighter got her. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's her father, isn't it? I imagine. Okay, so let's say if, that if she, if she had, if she's that old, it must have been whoever was current. Covered, they got busy. Ben dead. Sometime in 1979. That's my theory. Kaboom. Well, that that's that's probably like the most logical. Yeah, I just assume that because I always think about characters who are dead that had sex ten years before. I mean, every time I find out somebody's dead, did they have sex ten years before? No. That's a question everyone should ask. <laughs> I need some more. <laughs> so Lori was a, Lori was asleep in that hospital bed for a while. We don't know how many hey, times that, it, Jimmy was stalking her. I think Buck was, was there <laughs> from Kill Bill. He kept coming in there. The nurse was like, "No, no, Jimmy, get the fuck out of here." Yeah, Jimmy was in there playing around. Like, What's this coke he's bringing in? Is he talking about his penis? Is that the coke? <laughs> If coke. anybody out there listening has any theories on the continuity, go ahead and give them to us. I, I saw this meme. It had a picture of Jimmy and a picture of Michael and it said, one of these two stock Lois strode the entire movie and the other one's Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like he was like, as soon as he saw her in two, he was like, ooh. ooh <laughs> nerdy in. Chick. I'm in. <laughs> I love, I like her wig. Yeah. <laughs> He probably the, i just assume because her his brother had a had a crush on her he maybe he had a crush or knew her he had a crush on her from, yeah. from and now now ben tramer's out of the picture i uh, know ben tramer's out of the picture. <laughs> Gone. He, got a, he got lit on fire anyway back to part six <laughs> now that we've gotten through this, this is just look i want to have a conversation theory things that don't matter <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, part six. Things I want to ask you guys based on differences. Do you like the way Jamie dies better in the producer's cut or in the theatrical cut? In the producer's cut or in the theatrical cut, she is thrown up on that machine, whatever that thing is, which is kind of a gruesome death. The other one, she lives and she gets killed by the man in black with a pistol. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally, like, I like the idea that she lived longer because I do too. she was such an important character in four and five and they really did her wrong at the same time, having her just go out the way that she did, it was kind of pointless to have her live. Right. Um, so I, I, I do kind of like the theatrical cup. If Daniel her. Harris would have been a part of this, do you think it, her, her role would have been bigger? No, I think that's the reason why she wasn't really a part of it was because they weren't going to do a big role for her and they weren't going to give her the amount of money that she was asking. They had to get batshit Paul Rudd in there. And, <laughs> I mean, he's one of the best parts of the movie, but... I, I, I just think the, the way, you know, he trails the blood trail and, you know, finding the baby, I think that was way more effective. But also... There's a scene. The, the another thing is there's the scene where Tommy shows up with the baby in the hospital, and all of a sudden, why is Doctor Loomis there? You find out in the producer's cut while he's why he's there. Right. It's, it's like Tommy just runs. Doctor Loomis. Right. <laughs> right. And and that makes it make more sense. Yeah. I'm yeah. Didn't get another skin graft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least they explain that. Why did, wasn't your face have a big gas pimple on it anymore? It costs That's a fortune, but at least I don't yeah. scare people anymore. I'm just gonna die in a few minutes anyway, because. <laughs> no, I, I this is my favorite out of these. I, I don't know why. I think I, I really like Old Man Loomis. Uh, I mean, I like Paul Rudd's character. I like all the Thorn stuff. I, I, I just think it's. You uh, sir stand alone. I remember watching it the first time and just being furious at that. Like, no, there's no fucking cult that controls Michael Myers. This is bullshit. And when it got to that scene where he just butchers all the surgeons in the room, I was like, yes! <laughs> At that That's moment, right. I just rolled with the punches when I saw it. I was like, okay, there's the Cult of the Thorn. That makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> Heal for me, Danny. Hold on, is that Freddy talking? Or... <laughs> it, it was such a big improvement over Part 5, and that's what made me happy with the movie. And I know it was. Right. It, it was. It's a mess, but it's it's still very enjoyable to me. I love part four or part six. I have actually loved it so much that when I got the producer's cut, I watched the my box set. This beaut back here. When I got this beauty, this was this one right here. When I got this this this. <laughs> for those this one right here. Okay. When I got this. <laughs> first of all, uh, I watched it for both of yeah. You need to talk, Seth. No, no, I, I was just. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's just telling you how he feels. Okay. No. Uh, anyway, when I when I got it, I, the producer's cut was in there. I was fucking stoked. So I watched the regular, the theatrical, and the producer's cut back to back to see like I'm gonna figure it out right now. And see which one I like better. I saw I the want like an amalgamation of both. I want I want a whole different cut. But yeah, when I first saw, I saw the producer's cut, it was like the the bootleg version. I saw that a while ago, yeah, and that was a really poor version of it, right? Yeah, there was like two sets of opening credits, and I was worried about that. I know that there was a petition online for years for them to release the producer's cut, and when they finally did it, I'm like, "Oh, are they going to clean this up?" And I'm glad they they did. Did you get a copy of it? Producer's cut? Yeah, is it in your uh, set? It's not in my set, but I, I got set. it separately. I found it. One that they I, I found it at Walmart for like seven bucks a couple yeah. years ago yeah. on Blue. The VHS yeah. cover one. Huh? It's the VHS cover one. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's the one I bought to put in my set. No, um, I got a different one, but this is my, my right. Okay, mine's yeah. just you yeah, just yeah, didn't get the slip. The <laughs> right. Yeah, Look, I, there's a fifty cent charge if you don't rewind this Blu-ray. I know, I know. You guys mentioned that uh, you you want a, an amalgamation of the two cuts because I know a lot of people like the theatrical ending more. Yeah. Um, because I I want that too, but at the same time I don't because I I kind of like the rune the runes ending mostly just because I like the scene when Loomis gets the the thorn ah! on his wrist. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. 
I don't know why. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm gonna do next, Horror Hound? I'm gonna dress as that Loomis and just walk around, pull my stable. Ah! And just everybody. Ah! Please. There's my Loomis uh, 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 cosplay for you. Ah! Yeah, someone did put together a cut co- of two movies. There's um, did they? yeah, but there's a there's a a guy um, on YouTube. Um, he put together his own cut of both of them. Actually, I had him send me the link. Um, I just haven't watched it yet. Well, I'm going to have you send me the link. Interesting. <laughs> I'll watch it after I watch the tent. Uh, let's see. Comment land if someone would stop calling my phone. Um, stop calling this man, please. Let's see. Ted Higgins said, gotta go. Thanks, guys. You are Thanks for joining us. Very You'll see welcome. You later. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come back next week as we talk about more naked pictures of Michael Myers. Uh, David Gill said, "Raised in the dark corner of the internet." I'm yeah, that was that. just a Google search. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a Google search. Sexy Michael Myers, and I got balls out and everything. It reminded me of that scene in Psycho Three with uh, Jeff Fahey. No, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. Stephen Wallace said, "I always said, why didn't the Strodes take Jamie? They they bugged me." That bugged me. Okay, it bugged me until I was old enough to realize uh, it don't matter. <laughs> but it does matter. Well, like, seriously, <laughs> did they, like, Lori Strode has died. Would you like to take her daughter, Jamie? No! <laughs> Fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That fucker came after her twice. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what it was. Her. But also, the husband of the... the <laughs> Or maybe Jamie didn't have a husband. Maybe it's just some guys she smoked a pot with, cruising around listening to Don't Fear the Reaper. But then the the wife didn't even know about like anything, and the son didn't know they were living in the Myers house. Yeah, yeah again, more bullshit. I mean, if you're a Strode, you know your history. Like if if you like Jared Haddonfield, you know the history. If you're if you're in the Tate <laughs> family, you know what happened to Sharon. You know, I mean, <laughs> but that I mean. You didn't know you lived in the Strode house? Come on, dude. That's that's Haddonfield history 101. <laughs> no one hit due to that. Come on. I, every time I see part six, Mama Strode just makes me remember Better Off Dead. Do you guys remember that movie? Yeah. True Grit. True Grit. yeah, I made the I made the true grit thing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny and better off dead. And I just Every time I see that movie, I just think of the way she was in that movie. <laughs> All right, let's 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 talk about some good here. What what do we like about Halloween Six? I was just gonna say, like my favorite shot of that movie is with uh, with uh, Deborah Strode mm. when she's outside and she little axe and yeah, she pulls yeah. down the sheets and Michael's mm-hmm. standing there with the axe. The way the camera's kind of panned up at him, yeah, it's such That's a striking good. image. I like that shot too. I like his mask. Yeah, it's got some uh, nice shots. Uh, cinematography in that film's good. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I don't know. What do I like about Paul Rudd? I remember seeing the film and thinking, this guy's too good for this movie. Like, this <laughs> guy, like, there was something about it. Like, I said, this guy's really good. He's got, he, like, he was creepy as hell. Yeah, but it was really funny yeah, too. He like a serial funny. killer when he's in the fucking bus station. Yeah, he's just staring at everybody. Yeah, but then you get those little moments like where he's got the fire extinguisher, he's breaking around. He looks at Michael and he's like, ah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so like, it wasn't a surprise that he went on to become you know a bigger star because I think this guy's got talent. He's got you know, he's got something. Um, you know, one of the best parts about Paul Rudd, though, in this movie is that he could revisit the character now, and he wouldn't look like he's aged today. <laughs> yeah. He's a va- he is a vampire. Yeah. Then they want him back for the new one, and he yeah. turned it down and couldn't well, do it. It was because of scheduling issues with Ghostbusters. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, which I love the idea that he may have actually done it. Yeah, I know? would have. I would have loved that so much. Yeah, that would have been a really interesting interaction to have Jamie Lee Curtis and him like interact. You know, it had that happen, like, you know, knowing Paul Rudd played Tommy Doyle versus, you know, Michael, who's yeah. now now cast for that role. I mean, I dug that 
the Tommy Doyle I said earlier, you know, the Tommy Doyle was a character that they brought in and that he was obsessed with the whole thing. And I saw Michael when I was, you know, 10 years old or whatever. Uh, I think he would be because Tommy was so obsessed with the boogeyman. I, I imagine he would have done so much research. It's, it's kind of weird that he did. It took that long for him to become a character. That just gave me goosebumps. Just thinking about that. Just, so, just, just thinking about that, how he was so obsessed. And of course he'd be this way. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's really, in many ways, a lead character in the first movie. A lot of it is from Tommy's perspective. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's aware. Of, he's more aware than Jamie is, you know, or Lori. Yeah, Lori's just, ah, no, no, no. Yeah, he was the one who, he was always, he's seeing Michael. And Do you think he saw right? Michael in the first movie? Like, remember the scene where he gets tripped? The Jack Lantern gets busted up by Lonnie, oh, that asshole. What a son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, like he had, to, like Michael is walking parallel with them, and Michael's just like on the fence line. And you don't think Tommy kind of? I can feel when I, I feel like there's somebody close to me. I look, I feel like he would, and then you know he keeps following him in the fucking car, right? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Just fucking lying. Yeah, well, Michael movie. had many targets in the first movie, not just Lois Joke. The, the... They still use Tommy though, huh? He kind of used Tommy. He was following Tommy around because he, like that conversation, he knew that Tommy was maybe not the target, but he had to, he had to figure out where that kid was going. But it's, it's, it always bothered me. He never looked over. You know, he just kind of put his head down. He was sad. I can see things out of the corner of my eyes and thinking no about, one's facing me. You know, just thinking like, about that smashed pumpkin. Smashed pumpkin. Like, Billy Corgan's gonna we'll fucking make a fucking Billy Corgan's gonna steal my shit. Yeah, <laughs> smashing pumpkin. Maybe <laughs> Billy Corgan was one of those fucking bullies. I will say one, one <laughs> thing. <laughs> Billy Corgan. One, one thing I still don't like or get about Six is that um, the Strode girl's son like just hears the voices. Daddy. I'm just like, why? I, I, it doesn't make any groomed. sense. Well, first of all, he was being groomed, right? Right, exactly. He was. They're trying to make another Michael. Exactly. So the, the baby would have been Michael's final sacrifice, and then the curse would have been passed on to Danny. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Danny family. wouldn't have anyone to kill because Michael killed all his fucking family. So there goes Danny's quota. Yeah. Got heads so, popping like temples. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna murder his son's second nephew. Well, hold on. Things went sideways for uh, from the beginning of the movie, if you think about it. So when he he's still like taunting Danny, trying to get him to kill for him, his family's still alive. But then Jamie escapes with the baby, and That's all true. that stuff's yeah. happening. And, and the man in black, if he's there, he doesn't know about it. So he's still a kill for me, Danny. Blah 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 blah. And by the way, in the producer's cut, there's a great scene with his mom who kind of scares off the the bad spirits and i love that scene in the producer's cut a little but, like rhyme thing yeah. so so when jamie escaped he that threw everything out of whack and then tommy you know and fucking dr loomis threw everything out of whack so they just sent their their rabid dog out after uh you know everybody to try to rein it in i think after that point they were done with that kid mm -hmm. i could be wrong i probably am well they were still about anything they were still following Danny around, you know. Danny oh, because they took him from Mrs. Blankenship's, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you guys have wanted? Would you have wanted <laughs> more after this movie? I mean, I don't. It wouldn't have been possible, obviously, because Donald Pleasance. Okay, but... so I I wrote something in 2002 after uh, what I think it, it was boned by the Oscars, an award-winning movie, in my opinion, Halloween Resurrection. Yeah. Right. I, I actually met my brother after we saw Resurrection. I'm not even going to lie. It motivated me. I'm like, I want to see I, I Lori was in some kind of protection pro program and she had to leave Jamie behind for some reason. That's what was in my head. I want to see the two timelines converge with H2O. We get John, Paul Rudd, and Kara all working together somehow. That's what I wanted to see. But, uh, you know, the Halloween, I guess it would have been nine at that point after Resurrection. Yeah. But yeah, I would have been fine if they would have gone on. I would have. It's probably better they didn't because I mean we got two beautiful films that Rob Zombie made. <laughs> well, I mean the original idea for Halloween Nine would have been all right. I mean they were, but 
tell us what it is don't just it would have been all right okay the show's over well what? yeah but i mean because the, they they bring back uh john tate and they bring back lee brackett mm. you know so it and it was an improvement over uh resurrection but not by much but still it was an improvement like everything's an improvement over resurrection <laughs> yes <laughs> Let's let's uh, roll into some final thoughts here. Let's let's start with Nate tonight. Final thoughts on the Thorn trilogy, your favorite. Uh, I only like part four, really. Um, I love part four, so it's it's but yeah. Well, how long do you go back to the other two? You know, part five, as bad as it is, it's still in that nostalgia area. It's kind of like oh it's kind of like oh well i i watch all the old friday the 13th movies because they still feel like the early 80s friday the 13th movies like as as shitty as part three is to me like with the 3d stuff and all that. it's like it still feels like part two and part three and part one and part four and all that mm -hmm. so part five still has it's it came out when i was still young enough to it still has a, a, a nostalgic pull for me um part six again i really used to like part six a lot and the mo more and more i watch it the less and less i feel positively about it uh, the, the way yeah it, more and more of, of well this this is a wreck and it's and i don't care about anything other than like tommy and uh and, and, don't and, like and loomis i don't know i can give shit a little bit i don't like i don't she didn't really grip me um her breasts were like, too small. that's what they said I, what they said her breasts were too small well even like the the brother and his girlfriend they're pain in the ass and then the disc jockey guy and i was like i just don't i and the parents are assholes other than the mom of course but she's like such a clueless twit that you know, right. <laughs> yeah it's like it's an asshole movie yeah i just i can't get into it and uh, now um tommy's the only interesting character in the movie to me um so yeah my, my final thoughts are um i'm glad they decided to bring it back because i got part four and i cherish that movie it's one of my favorite horror movies uh it's, it's definitely one of my favorite sequels of all time of any sequel in the horror genre uh i got you know i love jamie lloyd i love i love the character jamie lloyd i love daniel harris and that maybe that's part of why part five still because i it still has jamie in it and it still has loomis in it and loomis is great in it uh so they're they're not without worth you know part six i wish had more loomis or that donald wasn't probably ill because he just feels ill he doesn't feel like himself to me in that movie yeah it doesn't seem like the uh, donald pleasance to me in that movie um from i mean from the very opening lines you can just tell it, uh, he's not healthy he's not well um the so, monologue at the beginning yeah yeah so i don't know um i i remember just like i said being excited that there was a new halloween movie and i really think that's how it is like when when the new halloween movie came out in 2018 and people were bread bitching or griping like I did, and I, like you said, Ray, you were so excited to see Michael Myers back, a new Halloween movie in 95. Uh, that's, I, I, you know, when, when 2018 came out, I mean, you had a whole generation of kids who never got to see a Halloween movie in a theater, and that's kind of how I felt. Like, probably Keith may have never, I guess you saw the Rob Zombie movies yeah, that's Rob, inappropriately. Rob Zombie is my first one in theaters. <laughs> yeah, inappropriately. <laughs> but, um, you know, to, it, same, same with the Child's Play movie when it, the remake came out. I was like, you know, there's kids who haven't seen a Chucky movie in theaters. It's been almost 20 years or something since the theatrical it. release. I did too. Uh, so I get excited for the new generation to have those opportunities to see Michael Myers on big screen or Jason on the big screen like, and to experience a new one. And they're going to be more acceptable to it because it's theirs. It's mm -hmm. that, like we got to experience like I got to experience those movies as they came out some of them not all of them so and there was a special thing I hear there's a new Jason movie out we're gonna go see it and you know maybe it wasn't great but it was still you're like hey I got to go see his Friday the 13th movie tonight well, that's cool yeah um so to me that's that's how those movies were so I enjoyed them at the time over the years I'm like yeah this is not that good uh part four 
despite all of its flaws at times, I still love that movie. And I, I watch it every October. I don't, it's a must. Yeah. All right. Moving right along to Jared. So going into this episode, I watched the movie that I have seen the least, which would be part six. Mm. Part four and part five were always on USA growing up. Like I, you know, didn't ever have them on DVD until I was an adult, obviously. But those were the movies that I remembered a lot more growing up. And after watching the producer's cut, like, yeah, the movie is a far stretch. But part six out of the three, in my personal opinion, is my favorite just because they kind of push the envelope a little bit. I'm not alone. <clears throat> and like, I don't have the best answers for that. It's just kind of like the, the pacing of the movie. And I love Paul Rudd's character. Like the whole scene where he's investigating in the bus station, you know, following the blood stains in the producer's cut. Like it totally changed the tempo of the movie. Like, you know you get you understand why he has the baby like it's i don't know and another funny thing is i thought donald pleasant was really fucking short and paul rudd was really tall because when they were together they're like mismatched because i've always thought paul rudd was as my height but he's like 510 511 i didn't realize paul Donald Pleasant was like five seven. I thought he was like a midget. <laughs> just, <laughs> just by the way they look at him, he's like a head taller than him. But so I now realize that Donald Pleasant is basically my height. <laughs> God damn it! But no, they're all they're all three good movies in their own right. You know, we're obviously talking about sequels. You know, they're not everybody's cup of tea. They're all watchable. Like I will still watch them. They're not Excellent. resurrection. Not resurrection, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I won't watch again. I can't. I can't. Listen, guys, we're doing a five-hour episode <gasps> dissecting resurrection shot for shot. That is tomorrow. <laughs> we're on it tonight. We're gonna watch it at least three or four times. Uh, so Keith, you go ahead with some final thoughts. Uh, the four and five are probably the ones I didn't really watch a lot growing up. I, they're my least watched ones. Um, I, I like them. I, I don't know what it is about them. They, they just don't feel Halloween to me. I don't know if it's cause I didn't watch them when they came out. Like they, they, wait, wait, how can four not feel like Halloween? They just have a different vibe to me than one and two, like one and two are Halloween to me. Those are my Halloween movies. And they, they just, it feels more commercialized. If that makes sense at all. It, like it, it's way it's it's four. more it's a more bright movie like one and two are way more dark and four and five feel like rural films opposed to those yeah movies. there you go that, that's a better but they didn't have Dean Cundy so <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a better way to explain it I don't know I I like four five as we've already talked about so, yeah but six again is my favorite out of these it, same <laughs> same reasons read the latest comment his comment what he's trying to distract you i don't i don't have a latest comment it says how can four not feel halloween ah. <laughs> again i didn't grow up with these movies i'm just going off from me watching them they already existed it's okay you have your opinion just like assholes we all got them <laughs> You know, six six is my favorite. Again, what Jared said, I love Paul Rudd's character. I, I like a, a lot of the way it's shot and the way it's lighted. I like J or um Michael's mask. Um, I really like the ending shot with the pumpkin and the 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 tea candle flickering inside of its mouth. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. I, that. I I just I like all the rune stuff. You like the way it was edited, huh? <laughs> Not edited. I don't know. That, that's my final thoughts, I guess. <laughs> Seth, we look to you now. Okay, so um, I I actually I rewatched four and six quite a bit. Um, they're both highly enjoyable sequels. Um, probably the two I watch 
not not quite as much as one and two, but those will be the next two that I would watch more, um, and 2018 as well. But um, unlike Keith, I, Halloween four totally feels like a Halloween movie right from the beginning. <laughs> He's fucking insane. We get we got we get trick or treaters. We well, I, I'm saying like like I feel that like opening it's, sequence. You man. don't know what Halloween is. I feel like it's more of the the. You're from West Virginia. The way the movie's laid out, how about that? Because like, you go, we go so many places in four. Like, one and two are more like localized and centralized. Like one, the only places we go are two houses across the street from each other, a store, and the school. That's it. But but how does it not feel like Halloween visually? Again, it's light. Like it's it's a bright. They're bright movies. They're not. Dark Give them for having movies. daylight and moonlight. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, okay, all joking aside, though, um, Keith, it's fine. I'm just busting your balls. I yeah, I, I, I like four and six a lot. Five is one of my, towards the bottom of my list, I would watch the Rob Zombie movies more than five in Resurrection. Um, just my personal opinion. But, uh, I mean, I love this franchise, so there's not one I refuse to watch again. I will watch Resurrection again once every three and a half years on a full moon. <laughs> it must be this year because we're doing an h2o show with resurrection <laughs> i'm done back to you guys <laughs> yeah i feel like i'll probably put resurrection in and get as far as i did last time like nope i'm putting something else in you know i just watched that one recently i can't get through it i can't the acting is fucking god awful calm down your meds it'll be fine did you say take my meds <laughs> Yeah, you're, it's like a Wayne's World. You know when Garth all getting all, all upset. <laughs> yeah, I for me, I, I you know when Halloween Four came out, I was super excited. I didn't get to see it till we got to home video, and uh, I loved it right away. I mean, like I like I said, like Nate said, like uh, Seth has said, you know, it uh, right off the bat gets you in the mood for Halloween. Because there are Halloween decorations scattered throughout the entire opening of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't feel like Halloween to me. It feels like the summertime. No, uh, I love four. I don't like five. And I, honestly, it was it took me a long time to not like five and realize, boy, I hate Tina. She's not a great character. She's really annoying. And she her and her friends are the reason part of the reason i don't like to watch that movie not to mention the goofy cops i do love six i do like both cuts and um i do think the producers cut a little bit better uh, they've got that halloween music in it uh, i think that actually kind of helps with what keith is saying is having a similar score thrown in there you know i think that does help make it feel oh, no, like though part six has that that rock and roll heavy no, metal score going cut. on oh producers cut. yeah they, they I, okay good. Yeah, because they had Brother Kane in the original cut, and which I like that song, and Fools Shine On. Good song. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I like them. I'll uh, always watch them every year. And um, I'll watch any of them, really. Even the Rob Zombie ones I keep going back to. Although I'm starting to like think that they may tick down one each based on uh, Last Show and Halloween Resurrection being so awful. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, next week we are going to do something kind of fun. We're going to do Halloween 2 from 1981 versus 2018. Which one do we like better? Which one's the preferred path? I don't know how this show is going to go. It's probably going to be a 10-minute show. And, we'll be done. and back to looking for ne uh, sexy naked pictures of Michael Myers or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's next week's show. And then, of course, I'm going to keep talking about this. The 13th, we're doing the Halloween 3 so think of it as a uh, Halloween 3 type of discussion, but we're going to do a commentary. We're going to sit and watch it together. You guys get your TVs ready to go. We'll say, we're hitting play right now. And we're going to hit play and watch uh, that. Talk about another really good opening for a, a horror movie. That, that whole mm -hmm. opening of, you know, building the pumpkin is really, really cool. Uh, I, Halloween 3 is, is no longer, in my opinion, underrated. It's, it's, people are starting to really like it. And it's just a damn good movie. How many people here like Halloween 3? Raise your hands. Me. I love that movie. You're right. Halloween 3 is great. Tom Atkins is the best. So join us next week as we talk about Halloween 2 in 2018. I'm a Halloween 2 type of guy as 2018 keeps getting worse and worse to me. 
Uh, check out the YouTube page. I just put up a new video today, and it's no good. Give it a thumbs down for me, but subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday.